Hey folks, we're at DCNYourMarket.com here. Today I want to talk about something a little bit interesting, something I've seen in the last uh, week or so that I thought is worthwhile noting and sharing, mostly so you can keep yourself from doing it, uh, but also you so you can spot reviews and whatnot that may not have done it right. Uh, and I'm not blaming anyone, because I'll, as I'll show here, it's a super easy mistake to make. Now I've got an entire video full of footage, like 11 or 12 minutes up there in the corner that you can look at between these two cameras side by side, GoPro versus DJI. You can compare that, you can figure out which one you like or don't like, that's not what this video is about. About. This video is about footage off the Osmo Action that looks like crap. Uh, and you've seen it. You've probably seen reviews that you're like, whoa, that doesn't look right. Why is that? And one of the things I saw consistently across a lot of those videos is people not having stabilization on. And in most cases, it definitely wasn't on purpose because it kind of ruined their videos. And in some cases, they even admitted that um, where that basically made their video sort of useless, uh, which as a creator sucks. But why is that? Why is that really big name creators and magazines and news articles could get this so wrong? And the answer is unfortunately really, really simple. It's easy to. About half of my action footage was completely throwaway because somehow stabilization got churned off. So I want to talk about three ways that can happen. Actually, it's like three and a half ways and how you can prevent yourself from falling into that trap. Now, the first way that can happen is simply just misunderstanding what the camera is trying to tell you. There are technically three ways that the Osmo Action will display rock steady status. Uh, the first is when it's enabled and the blue text in the upper right corner is blue. It's as simple as that. It doesn't show on or off. It just shows blue. The second is white text, which means it's off. And the third is having Rocksteady white with a cross through it, which means that that mode does not support it. So you need to ensure the text is blue, which I know sounds obvious as I sit here, but it's not actually super obvious to a lot of people that may have got the camera for the first time. But the real issue here is number two, which is how easy it is to disable accidentally. Uh, and that's because the way it works on the camera is that when you swipe up to open the resolutions menu, in order to get rid of that menu, you have to swipe down. And that means that one third of that entire top bar section is now the rock steady button that you tap on or tap off. So if you're out in an action scenario on a mountain bike, if you're anywhere that you're trying to get action, you generally aren't like sitting here in a nice quiet place. And so you maybe just look real quick and swipe it down. Maybe you missed and it's still there and like, oh, I'm gonna swipe it again. And, and in that process, you just turned off rock steady. And that's exactly what happened to me a bunch of times. Again, I've lost running footage, I've lost riding footage, I've lost just general like around town footage because Rocksteady wasn't enabled. And unfortunately, when Rocksteady is not enabled on the Osmo Action, the footage is horrifically bad. But there's actually like an option to be here for getting yourself into even more trouble, which is that you can swipe away on this camera and fairly easily get yourself into the 4K 4x3 mode, which does not support Rocksteady at all. So now you're like up a creek where you don't have Rocksteady and you're in 4K 4x3, which depending on what you want may not be what you want, uh, and you don't even realize it. So that's another scenario where it's now disabled, and your footage looks like crap. Oh, quick note, if you're finding this video interesting or helpful or useful or any of the above, go ahead and just whack that like button right now. I really appreciate it. And the third way you can get yourself into a pickle is going from a non-supported mode to a supported mode. So going back to that 4K 4x3 mode, you've accidentally swiped into that and you're like, oh wait, I'm in the wrong place. I'll go back to 4K 60. When you do that, it does not re-enable Rocksteady. It just leaves it off. So you go back to 4K 60, you're like, oh, I'm good to go here. You swipe down, nope. It's, it's not on folks. And thus your footage looks like crap. And I myself am a bit by every single one of those options in the last few weeks. Trust me, I've, I've screwed this up more ways than you can count. Uh, and unfortunately there's no easy way to determine whether or not Rocksteady is enabled in your footage after the fact. I looked at a bunch of different metadata explorers and stuff and none of them show anything that looks obvious. My guess is it's written there privately. That's something that DJI support could look at. Uh, but there's nothing using any sort of public metadata that I can see anyways. The easiest way to know if it's enabled is just to look at the footage. If it looks like crap, like this, then it's disabled. If it looks good, like this, then it's enabled. There are some edge cases on the Osmo Action stabilization with lateral movements that you can get into some weird spots where it's not so great, but you can generally see between complete crap and really good um, where that sort of stands. Now the good news here is this is something that is super easy for DJI to fix, and I suspect they will, if for no other reason than being self-serving it's not good for business to have bad reviews. And so when you have lots of people out there, especially really reputable people showing bad footage, it's probably something you want to get rid of or at least fix. Um, and there's two ways they can do this, or at least I see two obvious ways. One, they could take that rock steady button in the top there and move it to the bottom of the screen. Uh, because you swipe down to dismiss this particular screen, that would kind of solve it to some degree. I think there's still a lot of confusion though because of the colors there, white versus blue. Again, it sounds obvious with me telling you this, 
but if you didn't read the manual and just took it out of the box, you probably wouldn't realize that. Uh, number two, they can go ahead and move it to a different screen altogether. Uh, so for example, they could move it to the swipe out from the right screen for additional camera settings. That's where you turn on things like dwarp and the file formats and whatnot. That would make a ton of sense. It would kind of mirror what GoPro has done. In the case of GoPro, their stabilization is on by default when you go to change any resolutions, as long as that resolution supports it. So for example, both GoPro and DJI support it at 4K60 and 16 by nine mode. So it just simply turns on there. That would make sense. And if you want to disable it, in the case of the GoPro, you have to go into a different menu and disable the stabilization there. To me, that probably makes the most sense and ensures that unless you purposely go out of your way to turn off stabilization, it's going to be on for you as long as that mode supports it. In any event, hopefully you found this useful. If you've got friends that are getting this camera here soon, definitely shoot them this video because it might just save them from losing their footage. It really sucks to have an epic day somewhere outside and then have horrific footage when you get it back because a setting accidentally got toggled on. Or or it's just something to keep in mind when watching your favorite movie channels. With that, have a good one.